there, makers. April Dunham here. Are you new to Power Automate and confused by all of the different options that you have when you go to create a workflow? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down everything you need to know about the different types of workflows or flows that we can create in Power Automate and the use cases for each one. I'll break it all down right after this. So what am I talking about when I talk about the types of flows that you can create? So if we go to flow.microsoft.com and we can click on the My Flows button on the left-hand side, and if we want to create a new flow, we would click this button, and these are all the types of options that I want to explain today. There are five key different types of flows that we can create that you wanna make sure you understand the differences between each so that you can choose the right one for your use case. So let's switch over to some slides and I'll break down each one of these different types of workflows and explain how they work and where you might use them. So I'm going to start with the business process flow. Now this is a special type of flow that allows you to provide a user experience that will guide your users through a particular process. So really like we're seeing here in this screenshot, a good example of this would be a sales process. So when you have a lead in some kind of sales system, you probably first need to qualify that lead and there's different processes involved there. Then you would move into the development stage and have different actions there. And finally, propose and the closing stage. So with these business process flows, they're organized into stages like you see. So that's the qualify, develop, close, and steps within the stages. The key thing to know about business process flows is the scope of which you can use them. These business process flows are specifically for Dataverse and can only be used on those Dataverse tables and used within Dynamics 365 or model-driven applications. So this wouldn't be something that you would use, say, with SharePoint as a data source or in a Canvas Power App or anything like that. It's a very highly particular use case for these, and there's different associated licensing as well. Anytime you want to use a business process flow, you're going to need additional licensing on top of what we call the seeded or included version of Power Automate within some of your Microsoft 365 licenses like your E3s or Business Premium. So you'll need to pay for that per flow plan or business process flows, since they are so tightly coupled with Dynamics 365, certain Dynamics 365 plans do include the ability and the correct licensing to allow you to create these business process flows. Next up is desktop flows. If you watched my video last week about Power Automate Desktop, then you already know what desktop flows are. This is a special type of flow that uses something called Robotic Process Automation, or RPA for short. To create these type of flows, you'll actually need to download and install the Power Automate desktop application on your computer. What that will allow you to do is open up the application and it will run a recorder and record the actions that you take on your desktop machine using a bot and can help automate those processes. The type of things that we would automate with something like Power Automate Desktop in these desktop flows are those services or systems that we don't have access to possibly in the cloud. This might be legacy software that you have loaded on your computer, or it could be Excel sheets that you're working with. Maybe it's screen scraping, getting data from other websites that you want to automate. And if you want an example of exactly what you can do with Power Automate Desktop and how it works, be sure to check out the video that I did last week on that, which I'll show somewhere up there, and I'll also put a link to down in the video notes. With Power Automate Desktop, there is potentially some additional licensing included as well. Now, one of the announcements with Ignite recently was that there is a free version now of Power Automate Desktop for all Windows 10 users. So if you have Windows 10 and a Microsoft account, it doesn't have to be like a paid business premium or a work account, just a personal account, then you can use Power Automate Desktop to automate some personal scenarios. Now there are some scenarios where you might need to upgrade to a premium licensing for these desktop flows. That would be if you want to share what you're building and collaborate on that with your team or call other flows or use some premium functionality like AI Builder, things like that. 
you would need to pay for the additional licensing. Next up, we have automated flows. These are probably the most common type of flow that you'll see in Power Automate. How these particular flows work is they wait for an event to happen automatically at the data source, and that serves as the trigger for the workflow to kick off. A common example that you'll see of this, which is what I have shown here, is say with SharePoint. So when an item is added into a SharePoint list or when a file is added into a SharePoint document library, you would want that action to automatically trigger a workflow process to kick off for say an approval. Now this could be for the variety of over 500 different connectors that we can currently use with Power Automate have their own distinct triggers that we can leverage in these automated flows. It could be say Outlook. So when a new message is received, it can automatically kick off when you get a new email and then perform the subsequent actions or steps that you have built out in your flow. The key thing here with the automated flows is no action is needed from you for this process to be kicked off. It's all done at the connector level or the data source that you're consuming. Now let's talk about something called instant flows. Unlike automated, these won't get kicked off automatically. It needs some kind of interaction for the workflow to be triggered or kicked off. There are just a handful of different triggers that we can use to kick off these instant type of flows. One way is manually from Power Automate itself. There's actually a trigger for these instant flows where we can use something called flow buttons. So if you download the Power Automate application on your mobile device, we have a screen here where we can see different buttons that we can click and that will actually execute a workflow. So I'll click on this save contact button and a form will pop up where I can fill out some information and that will kick off the corresponding steps that I have built in my flow. Another use case for these instant flows is from Power Apps. So we can actually call flows in Power Automate from Power Apps itself. So we can wire up, say, a button in Power Apps, and on the click of that button, we can have it call and execute a flow. That is another great use case of an instant flow. There's special types of triggers as well in OneDrive, SharePoint, and even Teams, where we can kick off a workflow for a selected item. So where these get kicked off, taking the SharePoint example, if you go into a given SharePoint list or library and select a particular item, you see that in the ribbon up here, we have an automate button. This will actually allow us to kick off one of these instant type of flows. There's actually a few built-in instant flows. One is called request sign off and another called send a reminder. So this is an easy way to, based on a date field in SharePoint, kick off a reminder, and this is using the instant type of flow. So the trigger is manual. We have to go into SharePoint, we have to click the automate button, select a workflow to initiate this process. So it opens up a panel here on the right hand side. We sign in to Power Automate, and we have to click continue. We have to have some interaction and input here on how many days in advance we want to have this reminder. And we have to click create to actually start the process. These type of actions are also available in Microsoft Teams. So say you have a chat message in Teams, we can use something called a message action and leverage an instant flow to kick off a workflow process. So an example of this, I have this message from Joni. If I hover over it, click these three dots, we see a more actions button. And if I click on that, we see we have several different options that show here. And I actually have a few different flows that are instant flows. When I click on one, I can manually kick off this process here and send a reminder to follow up on a given message. So same type of scenario we have available to us in OneDrive and even Excel. We can have an Excel spreadsheet and kick off a workflow for the selected row. We're also leveraging these instant flows in Power Virtual Agents. And if you're leveraging the HTTP actions, you can actually make HTTP request and have that trigger the flow. And finally, one of my favorite types of flows that we can use is what's called the scheduled flow. Now this one is pretty self-explanatory. These are flows that you're able to run on a particular schedule. These can be kicked off all the way from the second level to the day level and anything in between. So great use case for this is automatic reminders. 
So if you have some kind of list of tasks and you want to make sure that people are notified at different increments before the due date of their task, say you want to send one notification out seven days before it's due, then another three, and then one more the day before, we can handle that with a scheduled flow. Super simple, all you do is click these drop downs and you define your schedule. So every one day, every three days, you define the time zone that this should be kicked off in and the start time. So in this instance here, this particular flow is going to get kicked off every single day at 8 a.m. Central Time. And it will go and will look through a SharePoint list of tasks and it will send an email reminding people if they have overdue tasks. So that explains the different types of flows. One more quick thing I wanted to point out in this video. If you go to the flow portal and you click on the My Flows button, you might notice that we have different groupings here. So I wanted to point out where those five different types of flows we just went through will fall under here so that when you create a flow, you know where to find it. So the first tab we see here is called Cloud Flows. This is where you'll see the instant, automated, and scheduled flows. Now obviously the desktop flows or those Power Automate desktop ones will show here on this tab and business process flows have their own tab as well. One more key thing I want to point out, you notice that we have a shared with me tab. So with Power Automate we have the ability to make other people co-owners of a flow. So if I'm on vacation or I leave the company we have a backup person that can make changes to that. So any instant automated or scheduled flow that you have not designated a co-owner for shows up under the Cloud Flows tab. Now, if you have shared and made a co-owner for those instant automated and scheduled flows, those move over and are displayed here in the Shared With Me tab. So a lot of times people will think that a flow accidentally got deleted or disappeared when in reality they shared it and it just shifted to this tab. So definitely something I wanted to point out. All right, so that's all that I have for you today. I wanted to keep this video very short and simple. I hope that you have a great understanding now of the different types of flows available and where you might use them. I definitely plan to do more introductory videos on Power Automate, so if you have any suggestions, please share those in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.